folks and welcome to a new day for streaming hello um we are continuing with jester today uh if you were with me on wednesday um you would have seen kind of the first part of this uh kind of painting process where we did the uh, we were kind of working out the initial sketch getting down the shape of her hair and her horns and all that stuff and painting her skin texture uh kind of since then i've popped in her eyebrows i've done the eyes and the teeth um oh thank you so much rebel um and so now we are ready to uh take the next step which uh, as you can see i've kind of added i've worked out kind of the shape of the outfit and like uh where her clothing is going to be so the next thing we're going to do is continue with painting which means i'm going to be working on her hair and the horns uh you can kind of see a little sprinkle is going to be down here uh kind of obfuscating some of the hair where the hair is going to be um, but we're gonna paint all the hair in anyway, and the sprinkle is gonna be layered on top of that. Um, oh, Shaperoo, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm pleased you're able to make this one. And Carly Freya, happy puppy day. Not long at all to wait now, I bet you're very excited. Okay, so, uh, we're just gonna get straight into this with a new layer. We're gonna, of course, name it hair. And I'm gonna be doing the hair before I do the horns, because as you can see, the hair is kind of layered slightly in front of where the horns are. Oh, thank you so much, Cyberspecter. That was very, very kind. Uh, she's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun to paint uh, thus far. I really love painting cute characters with lots of, like, decorative elements and stuff. So, uh, really enjoying her. All right, so, uh, the first thing to do is make sure we're selecting the right sort of colour for the hair. So I'm just going to bring back up my Jester uh, reference. Um, we're probably going to start where kind of with this colour I've got for the eyebrows because obviously the hair and eyebrows want to be fairly similar. And then we're just going to start roughly bobbing in where the hair's going to be, as you can see. I'm just kind of going right out to the outer lines of our sketch just to make sure everything's uh, nice and opaque. And we're not, one thing we are going to leave out for now is her little buns because I, um, I was trying to work out from the official artwork of her winter outfit uh, that it looked to me like Jester uh, has a kind of pair of little buns behind her horns here and here. Uh, but because obviously they are behind where the horns are, we're going to leave those out until after we've rendered the horns out. Hello, Queerbird and Lezef. Welcome to today's stream. And I kind of, I finally settled on the sort of theme I wanted for this piece. I wanted it to feel quite happy and hopeful. Because uh, obviously the Mighty Nine's been through a lot of hardship recently and I wanted to do something cute and happy. So Jester's gonna be like holding a like a handful of snowdrops and it's gonna be like a kind of celebration that spring is nearly here and have a nice kind of springy feel to the to the picture while still being very much like in the winter outfit and having those nice winter outfit vibes. <laughs> You'll do fine quietly Freya. I'm sure the doggo is gonna be so happy. Right, we're just gonna follow the shape of the horn, try and match it as best we can so we don't have to clean up later. And then, kind of going around behind the ear, back up to this area. And now we're gonna switch to a slightly smaller brush because we're working with slightly smaller strands of hair. And then we're just gonna, again, this is slightly less, um, precise at first than my other style but that just means I can play with it a bit more be a bit more experimental and we can kind of neaten it up slightly later as you can see and then let's do these little bits here now these bits technically are kind of coming down from those little bunches at the back. So these technically are coming from the buns, but I figured they're kind of part of the main hair body at this point. So whilst the buns themselves I'm gonna do on a layer behind the horns, these little strandy bits are gonna have their own. Uh, they're gonna be on this layer with the rest of the hair. 
Hey, Bordeaux Lavalas, welcome to today's stream, and thank you so much to Hoxton1984 for following. Right, we'll do some on the uh, left hand side, or her right, I suppose. Jester, she's so freaking adorable. But also just such a cool, interesting character. I'm so sad I haven't had much time to do more kind of fan art for things lately, but finally taking some time to do that. Because I want to have some stuff I can sell prints of down the line. Oh, Border Level S, thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, my, my end goal is to have some stuff that I can sell prints of um, as that kind of helped me a lot, having something passive I can sell rather than everything being on a commissioned basis. Mm, got hair in my mouth, bleh. I think it's gone. <clears throat> so when this is finished, I will probably offer prints of it and open a little print store. Um, <clears throat> obviously it's not something I've done before now because almost all my work's been commission based. Uh, and I don't want to sell prints of people's kind of commissions because you know, it's personal characters um, that I've been commissioned to do. Um, okay, so let's just See how it's going? Nice, nice, nice. And we'll just fill in these bangs, come down the side. Bit easier when I've already got the bounding lines on. Um. <laughs> well, you can technically still stay in bed and watch the stream. I mean, that's what I do. I'm lazy here. All right, and then we've got, again, some nice loose strands. And I'm gonna be coming down here. Again, we can tidy those up as we go. Black saw. And then we've kind of got a big strand coming down from there, which we use a bigger brush just to pop that one in. And then we'll just slam down some dark blue, fill this area in. I did add Sprinkle. Yeah, Sprinkle's gonna be there in the final piece, for sure. I couldn't leave out Sprinkle. So, fun fact, uh, weasels are one of my favorite animals, so I was utterly thrilled when Jester got a pet weasel. Now we can start adding some smaller strands uh, and in some places some larger ones because like around here I actually kind of want mm, there to be a bit more like to match the heavy heaviness of the hair on the other side like so kind of a bit like that yeah that's working for me uh, yeah always animal companions that's always where it's at let's go back down to that small brush And then we have some middle strands kind of coming in down there. Now I'm just going to tidy up uh, some of our skin layer, as you can see. Just get these edges a little bit nicer. Whoops, why on earth did it go on, on blur mode? I don't know. Following up and around. Just basically making the lines a bit more natural here on the edge. And I can also cut away there a bit. And this line. <laughs> oh, Brit Blade VA, thank you so much. I'm pleased you could make it today. Oh, we actually had this problem in one of my, well, not problem, but we had this uh, train of thought in one of, in my home game that I actually GM. Uh, we have a wizard in the party who just got find familiar and was trying to work out what familiar they should get. Uh, and in the end, I think they were gonna go with a Robin because again, we wanted that wintery theming, but they didn't want anything too grand. 
Um, and a robin was just kind of adorable and perfect. I don't want a little bit of... Mm, don't want that there. I'm still very much making this up as I go along, so it's quite an experimental piece. Let's just bulk up the fringe a bit, I think, for now. And then we can always add more bulk to the sides as we go along. Okay, uh, and lastly, you just want a little bit more going on here. Okay. Yeah, our badger is adorable. I love badgers. Uh, that would be so cute. I used to have a hamster called Badger. Long story. Uh, okay, so at this point, uh, I'm thinking it's time to... Actually, no, we need to do some tidying up around the top of the fringe, don't we? Of course we do. Uh, so that's what we'll do next. I'm just very gently smoothing away at some of these lines, just so that the integration between the fringe and the forehead is nice and smooth is what we want. It'll make the fringe look a bit less straggly as well, hopefully. Although when you've been out in the frozen north uh, all day, I don't think your hair's gonna look perfect, even if you are just a labor. <laughs> Thank you so much for the, for the sub gift from Les F. I hope you enjoy it, Bordeaux Atlas. Okay, let's cut that down there. I'll have a little strand there as well, I think. There, I'm starting to really like this. This is looking cute. Uh, and then I can kind of see, we want the eyebrow to move over a little bit, actually. So let's just continue that down a tiny bit, like so. There we go, now let's save, <laughs> before we lose it all. Hey, Lethereal, welcome. I hope you enjoy our just art today. <laughs> I know, right? Everyone's characters has perfect hair and I'm here like, it's just, it's just boring and scruffy. All right, um, so with that done, we can start to do the fun part, um, which is going to be the shading. So first of all, um, we're gonna go back to that hair. We are going to make sure it is alpha locked. We're gonna make sure we take that original color. We're gonna push it towards purple a little bit and grab like a darker version. And then we're just gonna roughly paint everywhere that's gonna be slightly more in shadow. So mostly on the right, kind of behind the ear, that kind of stuff. And then we're going to do the same, but the other way we're going to pick a lighter tone and use that in areas which are going to be roughly more in the light, like so. And we end up with like a very rough gradient. So what we're going to do there is we're going to stick on a Gaussian blur to get a nice smooth gradient between those three tones. Uh, and you can probably kind of see where this is going. <laughs> so next thing to do uh we're going to eye drop from once again that dark area and i've just noticed something i need to do we need to tidy up the ear look at the mess look at the painty mess around the ear let's sort that right out we want nice smooth lines not blobby lines all right gonna fill that in there. I said I'm just gonna fill that in there. Thank you. Okay, now we can start rendering out the hair. And Lethereal, thank you so much for the sub. Hope you enjoy. Now, uh, we're gonna use my favorite hair rendering brush, which is a special brush from a pack called the uh, Lewin Fur Brushes Set. It's the very first one in the pack. It's called Fur Pointy End. Um, you can pick this one up on Gumroad. It's by an artist who I think is also named Lewin. So uh, check that out. It's a really good brush set. Uh, and then from kind of like oh, the hairline where it's peeking out from beneath this braid, uh, we're just going to start rendering. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I got this ages ago. It's, uh, it was like a um, uh, loot crate 
shirt back when I could afford Loot Crate. Um, and I got it, I, I subscribed purely just for that month to get the D&D shirt. <laughs> it's exceedingly comfortable and very cute. All right, it's gonna kind of continue around here. Again, this style is pretty much completely new territory for me when it comes to shading all these things. So I'm making up an awful lot of this uh, process as I go along. All right, there's some uh, detailing up there. I'm just gonna jump to a slightly even darker color because I want to render these side bits. A little. And over here, we're gonna have shirt shading coming in thanks to the horns. And down here, in fact, we're gonna need to take that darker. So we're going to do just that. I like Jessa with really dark blue hair. And especially kind of where it's tucked behind the ear, we're gonna pick up a lot of shadow there. Uh, and kind of bearing in mind, a lot of this little bit down here is gonna be hidden behind Sprinkle. So we needn't worry too much about it being perfect, but I still wanna get it looking nice. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, the little rat braids are adorable and I love that she's got an extra little pair of halo braids that go around her horns. Cause that's something only like someone who plays a tiefling would think of. Which as a tiefling main, I appreciate. All right, yeah, that's coming along nice. So let's actually look at the braids themselves now. Um, obviously we've gone over them a bit, that's totally fine. We're actually gonna start by taking that darker color and a normal brush and just darkening out the whole thing a bit. Or at least this front edge, like so. And then using some bit of blending, we are just going to kind of soften that. I need super intense music is playing, so that's when you know shit's getting real. Yeah, her little buns are gonna be back there, but we're gonna do the horns before we uh, render in the buns. Thank you so much to uh, One Hour Strike for following. Oh, Kazimov, thank you so much. That's very kind. All right, so we're gonna start with highlights and then do shadows. Unusually, usually I do it the other way around, but not today. We are gonna add lights to these braids. Again, this brush is just a godsend for rendering stuff like this. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really, really happy that it has like actually helped with your work. That's kind of what I wanted, I set out to, to try and do. Uh, so thank you. And then yeah, we're gonna add that little bit of shadow back in. paying attention to where the hair tucks in as we do this because uh, we don't want to be adding shadows in places they're not supposed to be and they have a nice braid kind of coming in up there so we'll do the same thing on the uh, back braid and then we can start doing something a bit more exciting well exciting to me Maybe not to everyone. So those are the little braids that go around her horns. Uh, at the back, we kind of have a parting, which is gonna uh, go out to where her hair is kind of falling down the back of the head. So I'm just gonna uh, kind of segue into that rather than just going from light to dark. I mean, I did that for a really long time, uh, Kazimov. Uh, that's kind of how I 
first learned digital. Um, I, I would do my line art in uh, like fine liner, then I would scan it into my computer and color digitally. Um, yeah, it's not maybe the most optimum way of doing things, but it's a really good way to learn and it's a bit cheaper than having to buy a graphics tablet. Oh, excuse me. We are going to use now the overlines layer. Everyone familiar with how I paint uh, knows the overlines layer is a layer on top of the line art, which helps add detail. In this case, it's going to do a bit more heavy lifting because um, obviously in this style there is no line art as such. Um, so it uh, has to work a bit harder. In fact, what am I going to. Hmm, I'm thinking of actually getting rid of a bit of the lines, but uh, I'll show you that when we come to it. One thing I do need to do very much is put some shadow under these uh, bits of hair. Whoops. We've got to make sure we're about to lock that up at first. There we go. That was looking a little strange before. Okay, now we'll do what I was saying I was going to do. Back up to the overlines layer. We are going to take some highlights and add some nice bright blue to her navy hair. And we're doing it on the overlines layer so it's not kind of restricted uh, by line art or by sketch line art, I should say. There's no true line art in this style. There we go, getting that nice rich blue in. Yeah, and this brush is just kind of perfect for this sort of job. Especially for the, it's really good doing those long streaks of colour. And then it's going to do the same on these little strands as they come down. And on the other side. Thank you so much, uh, Eve of Onville. I hope I said that right, for following. And thank you to Hailsbot for following as well. Hope you enjoyed the stream. All right, so we've got some of those highlights playing along around there. We're just gonna add a few down here, I think. Maybe not quite so intense, we'll, we'll subtle. Maybe a little bit more subtle. Don't worry, Springfall, we will get to you later. Okay. Hey, Ferdinand Pro 120, welcome to the stream. Okay, with those nice little bits of uh, uh, highlight mostly done, I'm just going to tidy up some ends and then we can add some highlights to the braids as well. Thank you so much for following as well. Gosh, thank you. Alright, and very much like before, just a bit more centred on the middle of the braid, uh, we're going to add these nice bright blue highlights. And because it's on top of our sketch layer, uh, it's not going to kind of pick up all those extra lines and marks the way the uh, normal hair layer was doing. Let's do the same over here. And on the little braids around uh, the horns. 
Just with a little, a little dash of light on those. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking what that is. I am going to just do a tiny bit more integration of these highlights down here so they're not quite so sudden. Again, it doesn't matter too much. This bit's going to be in my sprinkle, but I still like tidying my own work up a little bit. <laughs> okay, uh, next step is, I think, more light. Uh, this is going to be quite a brightly lit scene. Um, so let's, yeah, let's add some nice light to it. <laughs> Thank you, I really like painting braids. I see a couch with braids, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do it. There we go, just a little extra shine on her fringe uh, there. And on some of these braids too. Oh, it's Zoe, thank you so much. I'm excited to show the progress. Thank you so much, Melba Danu, for following. Hope you enjoyed the stream. All right, so I'm kind of zooming it in and out. I'm thinking this is almost there. Um, we'll do. We'll, we'll probably do the horns next, and then we'll look at doing those little buns at the back. Um, hmm, no, it's not time to do that just yet. I'm thinking aloud to myself. Oh, I know what I might do. We need to extend the skin now that I've kind of worked out uh, where the jacket is going to be. So, but no better time to do that than now. Um, ooh, yeah, there's something else I want to do as well. There's loads of things I want to do, apparently. Um, we're just going to merge this, the sketch layer together. I don't know why I've still got it all separated out. Uh, let's put that back on multiply like it's meant to be. And there are some areas I want to remove. Just unnecessary hair. Unnecessary lines there. Also, way back in the... Uh, Oh my goodness, Hailspot, thank you so much for the donation. That's incredibly kind of you. That's going straight towards uh, lights and, well, in fact, it's going straight towards RAM so I can, uh, my computer can chug a bit less when I'm streaming. It is indeed Jester. Uh, we are painting a Jester today. <laughs> um, she's been so much fun so far. I'm really enjoying her. Uh, oh yes, that's... There we go, there was a little speck of white down there that wasn't wasn't necessary. And then there's a few <coughs> other places we can get rid of lines. No, no, that's not the right layer at all, Rachel Benton. Pay attention to what you're doing, girl. Uh, we can probably uh sprinkles on that layer. Yeah, there's sprinkle. There's the coat. The coat and flowers. I'm going to merge together because we don't need them separate. Um, because also it will allow me to see where we can remove lines just to make things a bit easier for us to see what we're doing, such as there. Uh, and for now, that's that's probably where I'll leave that. Thank you so much, Melbourne Danu, for the bits as well. That's very, very kind. Goodness, I should paint Jester more often. I've been wanting to do uh, some uh, critical role fan art for such a long time. It's so nice to finally be able to do it. Um, cool. So now let's extend the area of the neck and shoulders. Uh, where we need it to be, basically. So we'll have a little little hint of it there, just disappearing behind the hood, where that's going to be coming in. And then we're going to continue the shape of the neck down to about here. And we're just going to ignore most of the lines for those, uh, those flowers, the snowdrops. Uh, the snowdrops are going to be coming in later. Uh, and we're also going to have to uh, kind of ignore some of the hair as well and just kind of work out this whole shape. Um, there, like so. And then worry about the hair in a minute. So there's the rough shape of our neck. Uh, let's just fill that in. I 
again, I told you this was going to be quite experimental, didn't I? <laughs> All right, um, then what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to turn down the opacity a tiny bit, which is going to look really heckin' weird for a moment. Um, just, just bear with me while I tidy up this area of hair down here. And then we've got this bit that comes around there. And I'm actually going to thicken it up a little bit. And then, whoop, 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 whoop. that's going to come in like so. Okay, then we can bump that back up to full opacity. And uh, just again, it's all about going between those layers and making sure all the edges are nice and tidy. And as soon as I'm happy with this, oh no, that was a mistake, that bit there. I forgot, already forgot my intentions. Uh, we can just fill that in there. We can just fill that in there. All right, there we go, there's the shape of the neck. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be snowdrops. I wanted a kind of transition between winter and spring with this piece. Uh, I wanted it to be quite, um, kind of like cute and hopeful. So yeah, she's holding a bunch of snowdrops. Okay, let's go back to the skin, make sure our alpha channel is locked before we blend this bit in. Like so, just nice to get these colors all nice and smooth. that's the edge so we're gonna have to move that a little bit further down experimental painting but that's fine it's only a tiny change you know, sprinkles little paws you can see kind of sitting on the edge of her hood sprinkle we love to draw I'm looking forward to that all right and then we can again blend that in and save because we do not want to lose our progress. <laughs> hair is really tough, Amy. I don't like worry about like hair. Took me years and years and years to get to the point where I was marginally happy with it. So just take it at your own pace. Um, like emulate styles you enjoy as much as you can, and you will get there. It just you know takes a little while. Uh, cool. Is there anywhere else I want to? Yes, hell yeah, there is. Let's get rid of this. These lines down here. They're ugly. They don't serve a purpose. Uh, don't you down here? No, that's all right. I just want to make that neck nice and smooth. So, next thing to do, I'm just going to do a tiny bit of tidying on this ear, I think, actually. There we go. That's a nicer, smoother shape. Um, back to skin for a second. Nope, we want to make sure we're not alpha locked. Uh, for this. Basically, if you're ever erasing parts of like a layer, you want to make sure you're not alpha locked before you do it. Okay, uh, cool, so, uh, hmm, I wanna do, hmm, hmm, <laughs> yeah, so I, I actually really enjoy Art Nouveau, um, it was one of my favourite styles when I was kind of studying at school, um, but, uh, I think it does kind of come through in some of my work sometimes. Right, now I'm actually just going to add some extra little flicks to the hair. Uh, may give it a little bit more volume. I'm gonna give it a separate layer though. I love using this brush now with this style for adding like extra volume without having to use line art first. It's really good for that. And I don't know if I'll keep any of this. It's, you know, like I say, very experimental, very free flowing form. I actually like that, so it's gonna go boop. Um, but what I might do, 
um, where mine to do is actually do the opposite over here because my problem is I think it's too long in places. Um, so we've got a sprinkle sitting there. I think what we need to take this edge back a little, not too much, and then just kind of cut in a little bit. Just so it's not such a solid lump of hair, if you know what I mean. Again, this bit doesn't matter quite so much because it's mostly pine sprinkle. Um, but yeah, yeah, that I think helps kind of break it up a little bit. Uh, oh, Rigzilla, thank you so much for stopping by. I uh, I did actually have a look at that. It looked pretty cool. Gotta love me some Destiny stuff. Just gonna put some dark edges along some bits of the fringe. To have it contrast. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, but at the end of the day, Jester, I wouldn't say exactly as rough and tumble um, per se, so I think it still kind of fits her. But we don't want to brush. And hey, you know, stylization is always fun. <laughs> it depends on what effect you want like if you want a rough and tumble feel then absolutely go for a different kind of style of doing it but if you want that kind of more floaty elegance that Art Nouveau just flows with then knock yourself out now I'm just kind of adding some loose hairs to kind of make it a little bit more natural around here but not too many or it can look too busy so I think that's going to do us and in fact I might even add some skin back in, just here. The idea is a bit kind of being tucked behind the ears there. Any updates on my Tiefling Barbarian? Well, last session, um, golly that was a while ago, when did we last play? We usually play every two weeks. Um, last session we, oh yes, we're trying to, we we're trying to finish a particular uh, scary mine which had ooblexes in it and clear it out. Uh, we found the pro the kind of the ooblex in charge. Um, my barbarian Reza got like two crits. It was wonderful. And then once we'd killed the ooblex, there were three hook horrors, which had come up to kind of see what had, what was left of the uh, the ooblex that we had uh, destroyed. <laughs> um, and then once we'd killed those, one of our party members decided to wander off on their own and wandered into a room which had, um, oh my goodness, what they're called, the really scary spider ladies that will eat you. Ugh, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but they died. That was, um, unfortunate, really. Party member kind of copped it there. Um, hmm, I think I'm actually even tempted to use green as a starting point for these horns. Ah, yellowy, yellowy brown. I'm tending towards grey. Actually, we might start towards blue and then work our way towards green. Oh, uh, Abby Ball, thank you so much! <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've wanted to paint Jester for ages, so I'm kind of really giving this one my all. Actually, no, I keep seeing things I want to do. I want to add more hair, hair down here with a small brush, though. Uh, Faye Leah 04, thank you so much for the follow. Right, let's finally do these horns. I keep I keep putting it off. Uh, and I'll probably change the way I want to do them like 50 times, but no no, not the dryders. The it's got uh they're um like a Japanese mythology uh woman still like a woman top half, but then all the legs kinda come out. Uh, anyway, that killed one of our five members, so that was that was tragic. It was the <laughs> their first time with us as well. The uh, the player who played them has really bad luck, but also very reckless characters. So, um, she died, unfortunately, to the poison. Something like that. Ah, oh, hey Stu, welcome to the stream. Uh, it was tragic, um, we mourned her very much, and now we're just trying to kill this spider lady. But then after that we're going to Zadash, which is great, because my character's from Zadash, which means, uh, she can show everyone how to have a great time. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yay, how 
Tuesday? Tuesday. Just gonna, again, roughly sticking to the sketch. Uh, there's a reason I refined the horns. I was kind of wanting to make sure the shape was right at the time before we got too far ahead. Um, so now that we've got the base colour for these horns in, we can start shading them. And I'm going to use a technique that a lot of you will most probably be quite familiar with by now. Um, I'm going to make a layer above the horns colour layer. We're going to set it to multiply. And we are going to... Thank you so much, Lazef, for the sub gift to Ab Ab uh, Abivor. Thank you. We're going to pick that shade, a very, very pale turquoisey pink, and we're going to fill in the entire layer, like so. Then we are going to start removing that shadow by setting our brush to white and just painting away where we do not want the shadows to be. And God, I, I can't remember where I first kind of picked up this technique. I think it was on like a, I think it was a Deviant Art tutorial, freaking ages ago. Um, when I was like, I don't know, like nineteen, maybe I picked that up. I guess that's not that far away ago. Feels like a long time ago. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, my my campaign that uh, I play with my friends, yeah, that's on uh, Wednesdays and it's uh, it's um, well man, yeah so my character is from Zdash and she may potentially be uh, accidentally part of the myriad working directly for the gentleman but no one in the, no one totally no one suspects that at all in the party <laughs> nothing shady about the barbarian with minus one to charisma who cannot lie to, to save her life Alright, kind of got them the rough kind of contours of where the shadows are going to be. Now it's time to add the ridges because uh, Jester has kind of ridged horns like a like a ram. And we're going to continue to do this in the multiply layer so we're not kind of spoiling any paintwork we've already done. And again, they're fairly rough for now. I'm not being too precious about how I pop them in. I'm just going to lighten up a tiny bit. <laughs> hey Neraline, welcome to the stream. Right now I'm just kind of studying the shape of how these horns work and they kind of are concave so they, they go in on themselves. I need to make my brush a bit bigger actually. Oh, the DVR tutorial, I think Oh goodness gracious, what is the artist's name? I used to really like them when I was younger. They painted a lot of um, like brightly coloured critters. Oh, they were really big on DDA. I've completely forgotten their name. I could probably find them if I dug up my old DA account, but that's dangerous territory. Let's just see if I can I can find them because I found it quite useful their their way of colouring anyway. I'm not good. I'm not going to show anyone my divin art. Um, no one's going to know what it is. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Actually, it's quite easy to find my my official divin art account. Ah, <laughs> uh, what that was my name, wasn't it? Hang on, let me see if I find this tutorial, or at least the name of the artist. I can tell you. Um, oh my god, it's so weird looking at my old accounts. Really, really weird. <laughs> Alright, let's find this artist. Um, da -da 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 -da. Gosh, how far back is this? It was very far back, apparently. Uh, jeez. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Nerilene. Yeah, this was a, um... Uh, blah, 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 blah. This was a t-shirt I got from a uh, loot crate a while back. This is rough. Ah, here it is. Uh, the artist was Griff Snuff. Um, a very, 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 very long time ago I was really into their work. Uh, and they had a few tutorials um, on kind of shading and stuff. More like cartoony style than uh, realism shading. 
but it's like the same similar principles, so it's kind of worth checking out. So that's yeah, that's Griff Snuff. They were super well known back. I don't really know if they're still well known. Or I haven't been on DeviantArt for a very long time, but um, yeah. Um, do I like these ridges? I don't know if I do. I kind of want to have another crack at them. Uh, let's put them on the other side first, then I will make a judgement. So, small brush for the other side. And then we're just kind of matching the ridges on both sides. Um, and hmm, I think it needs to be darker, you know, on the uh, on the shadowed side. So we're gonna bring in extra shadow there, and probably also in the little nook where the horn is curling around there. Let's just go to current layer and just blend that out a bit. Good evening, Angelus Lucis. Welcome to today's stream. It's just our hour. Um, hmm. I don't like this bit very much. Let's let's get rid of it. <laughs> and then I'll be back, but better. <laughs> It is, it's just a day. Okay, that's better. I'm more fond of that. Uh, but then I'll have to make sure it matches on this side, so. We've kind of got this upwards now shape coming as we come towards the horn cap. Awesome, okay, so that's coming along all right. Um, hmm, what next? What indeed? Um, we're gonna darken down this side. Because we're gonna manually kind of highlight around there in a minute. So now we've kind of got this base to start with. I'm gonna move up to, do I want a new overlines layer? We're actually gonna use layer 10, I think. Yeah, because it's separate. We can kind of keep things a bit more separate. And do I need all oh, layers, you fool? I'm actually gonna to jump towards green. I know. Bit, bit unusual, but that's what we're gonna do. And then we're just going to add a little edge there. I might end up redoing all this. Again, like they say, very experimental. Too dark, it's too hard edged otherwise. Grrr, do not like straighten. And then maybe that's working better, it's hard to tell right now. Uh, Let's put the dips in, but with a slightly lighter tone. Ah, that's better. I like that a bit more actually. Yeah, it's been a pretty good week for me as well. Um, very busy. Uh, one of the reasons I'm working on Jester on stream is because I cannot work on any of my official work on stream. I have NDAs coming out my ears. But they're very exciting ones. Alright, yeah, 
this is going okay. Let's just keep plodding along. Like so, yeah, that's coming along, getting, that's the thing, often you'll have a moment where it's like, oh, I really don't like my work, like, I can't see how I'm gonna fix this, uh, but if you just kind of keep going with something, you'll, you'll get there in the end, you'll pull yourself out of the hole. Well, we are going to use the lighter colour. One hundred percent, what it is. Definitely no sign of I. Alright, then we're going to pick an even lighter colour for the proper bright highlights. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've had kind of coldy symptoms this week. Thankfully nothing super <coughs> major, but uh, it's just been a little bit, a little bit of a, like one of those slower weeks where you get more headaches and earaches and stuff. And uh, yeah, a lot of cold symptoms going around. My partner's had them too. So we're just keeping safe and keeping warm. Annoyingly, we had, um, part of the reason I reckon it happened is because we had to have people around to see our flat <coughs> at the beginning of the week. Um, and even if it's not like the bad one, still having, having to like interact with people and allow them in your home after not really doing so for a long time means you're pretty vulnerable to catching bugs and stuff, so. Okay. I'm sure we will. We'll be much better soon. Just gotta wait for it to pass, you know? Okay, that's one horn I'm quite happy with. Uh, let us look at the others. So we've kind of changed up slightly how we're doing it, aren't we? Uh, so, again, we are gonna identify that key edge, like so, but what we are gonna do is these indents are now wider than they were before. And, in some cases, darker. Oh yeah, my partner gets really bad allergies. But um, I tend not to, well, apart from my nut allergy, but that's a different kind of allergy. Um, so it's just a bit annoying, didn't really want a cold, but hey ho, what can you do? Like the people who came around were wearing masks and everything, I just don't think you can really stop it when you're gonna have people in a close environment, it's just gonna happen. There's a nice little edge there. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit of highlighting on the bottom edge as well, just because these shapes tend to catch the light quite nicely. Like so. And then even on the actual lower horn side itself, just a little, little hint there. And then we can do the top side. Hey, is it Dungeon Maker? Hello and welcome. <laughs> oh, Brit baby, thank you. I, I people tell me that I'm fast, but 
I, I think this goes for every artist. I always feel like I paint shatteringly slowly. Or maybe it's the fact it takes me a long time to work my brain up into a good painting mood. And it takes me more like mentally to get in the zone. And once I do get in the zone, I can be quite productive. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like compared to like expectations and what you're told you have to put out when you're like at uni and stuff. I always thought I painted way too slowly. But people are telling me I don't, so it's nice. It's nice to hear. Whoops. I have to go down here, not up there. Just careful, going careful not to go over. In fact, what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna add a little highlight to highlight the edge of the braids here. And help them stick out next to the horn and then going back to the horn we can add that brighter brighter highlight on those oh thank you very much <coughs> excuse me that bit in slightly and then just do a little bit of backlight on the hair like so oh naps are good my problem with napping is i cannot for the life of me work out how to have a nice restful nap like i if i if i get into bed with the intention of napping i will not wake up for hours and when i do wake up i will feel groggy and grumpy and hungry definitely not a good mood for working uh, so I found that naps are not uh, very good for me when I need to get a lot of work done in a day. I wish they were. I wish I had the ability to power nap. I truly do. It is a gift. Okay. I'm quite happy with how these horns are turning out, so... <laughs> yeah, it never it never works for me uh, ever. Um, I can't. I just can't nap. Uh, okay, let's do the cute little silvery horn caps next. I think they'll be fun. So going back down to the horns layer, making sure again our alpha uh, is locked. We are going to start. And I think these are going to be derived from bluey purple uh, with a nice mid purpley grey, which will be slightly different to the more greeny grey we're using for the horns themselves. Oh, Border Lapalas, absolutely. Um, I'm the same with art. The initial um, kind of working out construction process when it comes to art takes me the longest time. Uh, the kind of gradual rendering of all the bits, it's I, I just kind of attack it systematically. I, like, I'm not super quick, um, but if I kind of have it in my head that I know what I'm doing, I'm quick. Okay, uh, now it's time to completely ignore the lines and just, oops, go off the grid for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Do I ever take a coffee now? So funny, funny thing about me. Um, I cannot stand coffee. And it's complete sacrilege, especially since I worked in game dev where you survive based on coffee, but I cannot, I'm a child. I just cannot enjoy it or want to drink it. It's just too gross to my taste buds. Now the only hot drink I'll, I I don't even drink tea, which again I'm British, so that's just uh, sacrilege. Um, the only hot beverage I really drink is hot chocolate. You know, it's uh, sickening. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Pretty much everyone I've ever met in game dev can only survive through the power of coffee, apart from Stu, probably. I think you're you're not too bad with coffee drinking, but everyone else I've known is addicted to coffee. I get by by drinking, well, too much uh, Pepsi Max. That's my poison of choice. Kind of add 
getting anything, the metal to shine nicely. Angles right. There we go. That's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's the thing. Uh, when it doesn't sit right with your stomach, you just don't don't drink it. Only hot drink is hot chocolate. Yeah. See, that's the way to go. Hot chocolate's the best. Um, but no, I drink. I quite like carbonated drinks. Um, I only drink them sugar free, but I drink way too many of them. Okay, we're starting to get that nice metallic feel. We just need a slightly brighter tone, and I think we'll be there. Once I've done Jester, I might I might do some more high rollers. Uh, I've been wanting to for ages. I just haven't had time. Um, high rollers means a lot to me. It's very sweet, and the people who who do high rollers are great. Uh, okay, let's do the other horn. I'm quite pleased with this one. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um, we've got our bass tone. I might actually just tidy tidy it up a bit. Fancy jewelry is so cool, I know. Goodness me, if I was a tiefling, I would decorate with all the shinies. Um, ironically, my active tiefling character doesn't because she's poor as heck. So she uh, she doesn't spend much money on prettifying herself. I'm hoping the party bard will like do a makeover search with her. <laughs> hey, Jessica Sonnet, thank you so much. And uh, G8 designer and Alex Trix, how did I miss you? I'm so sorry, but thank you for joining. <laughs> and yeah, I do stream. Um, oh, that's really cool. I'm very pleased that uh, I was able to inspire you to uh, to uh, paint your retreat, and that's really nice. Thank you. All right. Line on. And then we can add uh hmm, I think we need a bit I think we need a bit more sh oops, shadow on this side. so yeah that'll do us and then we'll add a hint of a very dark shadow in as well before we add the light there we go and then we'll take that really nice bright color and fine do the metallics on uh, the very bright highlights on this side Like so, and then we have two shiny horn caps looking all cute. Uh, so, what should I do next? I think we'll do those little hair buns next. You can kind of see where I've worked them in. Um, yeah, they shiny, like Jester. Jester's shiny too. Um, so, let's put in those hair buns. New layer, because we want to just keep things separate and tidy for now. Uh, we're going to use a color I've just picked from the main body of the hair. And then, with a big brush, I'm just going to put these little buns in. And don't be able to say, thank you for the reminder, Rebel. Very kind. I love having chat to remind me to say, you do a dance set better than I do. Alright, there's this is kind of shape of the little buns. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I get that from a lot of, I hear that from a lot of folks. Um, I am blessed to be immune to the lure of coffee, but unfortunately, uh, instead, uh, I am weak to Diet Coke. I drink way too much of the stuff. Okay, let's go back to those buns and add some shading to them. Let's go back to my favorite brush. And of course, adding shading, we also need to add highlights. So let's do some of that as well. Uh, do I make my brushes? Uh, so the usual brush I use uh, is just the um, simple uh, vanilla kind of hard round pressure size brush, which comes with Photoshop normally. Um, the only difference from the normal setting is I always have transfer turned on and you want to make sure opacity jitter is set to 0%, control is pen pressure and that's minimum and flow jitter is off. And that's what I've used for almost this entire portrait, except for rendering hair. Um, these lovely little brushes are from a pack called the uh, Lewin Fur Brushes pack, which you can find if you just Google it. I believe the artist has a, uh, a gumroad and you can basically, um, yeah, you can kind of support them. I believe it's a pay what you want sort of deal. And if you do that, then you can access this lovely set of brushes, which are just perfect for, for rendering hair, as you will see. <laughs> Get back to those burns. That's the, the quote of the stream. I'm gonna just do this on the overlines layer because um, it's just a neater way to do it sometimes. And then we're just gonna put some kind of shadow back in. And then some brighter highlight with a smaller brush. <laughs> no problem at all. I hope you are able to find them. I think they're still available. Okay, uh, then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna add I'm just gonna scruff them up a little bit basically because buns ain't perfect. Anyone who's tried to wear a bun will uh, attest to that. I'm just gonna add some loose hairs kind of coming out. And there she is, that's basically the portrait almost done. So let's save again, because I don't want to lose it all. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Britley PA. Hair painting is an awful lot of fun. Um, it takes quite a long time to get the hang of it, but once you do, it's it's just really rewarding, honestly. I just realized that this should technically probably be part of the brave, so I've kind of gone about it a bit wrong. most of the portrait. I'm kind of, I'm still debating a few things, such as with the horns, do I want to make them a little bit more blue? Uh, so for example, if I do this, just make sure just the horns are selected basically in the horned caps. Uh, if I do this and we'll play with the color balance, we can make them more blue. We can make them more cyan. We really cyan. Or red or purple a lot of things there. I quite actually am enjoying that purple. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the portrait. Um, oh, go, <laughs> go Gigi, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lezef, so much for the uh, bits. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, I'm just gonna add a bit more highlight on this bit of hair coming down here, just to really make sure it contrasts from the horns. There, 
that's better, I like that. <laughs> How late do I normally stream? Uh, so, usually I stream for about an hour and a half to two hours. Kind of depends, like, I'm still kind of fighting some cold debug symptoms at the moment, so I'll probably only stream for an hour and a half tonight. Um, but I want to do some more Stardew Valley again soon. Um, that'd be fun. We had some Stardew Valley fun, like, a week before last, I think. Um, so maybe in the weekend we can do some Stardew Valley. That sounds like fun. Because I'm going to be moving house soon, uh, and so that's going to be a big upset to my normal schedule. So I want to make sure I get lots of streams in before that happens. <laughs> awesome, so what do I want to do next? You can see little Sprinkle hiding down here. He's going to be cute, but I'm not going to pay him now. Sprinkle's probably going to be one of the last things I work on. I think uh, next thing to do will be her hood, like this kind of fluffy, fluffy bit of the hood here. So what I am going to do... I'm going to take all these parts of, um, kind of the face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge all these face bits together. Well, not merge them, sorry, group them together. And then, just to make sure, um, you can kind of see it does add some nice bit of shading, the, keeping the sketch in. I'm going to create a clipping mask so the sketch does not go outside of where we've painted. And that basically just tidies that whole situation up quite nicely. Um, oh, Ripley, thank you so much. So much kindness in chat today, thank you all so much. Um, but yeah, that, that basically keeps the whole kind of portrait and face area nice and tidy, uh, so that we can go ahead and make a new layer underneath, and I'm going to call it Hood Fluff, because that's what it's gonna be. Um, and I'm just looking at the concept art that was done for Jester's winter outfit. Are we frozen? Photoshop, surely not. No, okay, let's, let's just save again, just in case. Because <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to die on me. Uh, and we are going to colour pick from the skin, because the skin is going to um, it's going to kind of reflect on the fur a little bit. Hi, ever so slightly, thank you so much. Um, very kind. Uh, and from here, we're going to go towards grey, and then up a little bit towards pale blue, and just use this as a temporary base colour. So, with a nice, uh, just big brush, we're just gonna blob this colour in the rough shape of the hood and the fluff. And we're going to ignore the, the flowers for now. The flowers will go on top, on their own kind of layer. And we'll also ignore the gloves. The gloves are in the foreground, they will also be going on top. For now, we're just worrying about the kind of the fur hood. Oh, hey, little Sprinkle's tail. Sprinkle's tail's just gonna creep in the side there, looking all cute. Yeah, the winter outfits are all great. I love them to pieces. I, I've wanted to paint uh, some winter Critical Role characters for such a long time. And now I have an excuse. And the excuse is that I can't do it stream any of my regular work because NDAs. <laughs> and then technically uh, the hood would continue back over here. Sprinkles in the way, but we're gonna paint it in now because I like kind of layering things up anyway. <laughs> do I do permissions? I do, yes. Unfortunately, I'm not open at the moment uh, due to aforementioned big NDA project eating up most of my time. Um, but I am hoping to open permissions in like the uh, not too distant future. It's probably going to be March or April before I'm free though. Okay, with that turned down, we can start shading this fur. First thing, as you're probably kind of familiar with as a Tactic by now? Tactic? I mean kind of like method? I don't know. What's the word? I've forgotten. Uh, we're going to stick a multiply layer on there. We are going to take a very light uh, kind of pink and fill the entire layer in like so. And then, uh, this is roughly how I, how I paint kind of fur trim and fur in general. Um, I With that multiply layer on top, I will then select white as a paint colour and the paintbrush and I will start by just roughly removing the shadow from areas I feel the light is going to be making good contact with. Like so. And I'm 
keeping my strokes very light and quick, like I'm not being neat about this at all. And because it's kind of just this, this shading layer, I can like draw all over here and nothing will happen because uh, the paint colour is white. And obviously if you have a multiply layer, uh, white doesn't do anything. And then it's going to get darker again towards that edge. And now I'm going to go to current layer when I'm eye dropping. And you can see that because I've been painting on white on top of the pink, we now have a gradient for our shading colour so I can blend these areas a little bit. Like so, and that's like, uh, roughly gives you the 3D kind of shape of how your fur's going to be sitting. <laughs> the technique Squidward, that's a better word, yeah, you're right, technique. Um, once that's done, it's time to kind of refine these shapes a little bit. So to start with, I'm just going to blend a little bit between the layers of shadow so it's nice and smooth. It's also nice and laggy, goodness gracious, I know where those... Uh, that sweet, sweet Twitch money's going towards. I need some more RAM! Uh, again, just really gently, like, kind of tickling it with the paintbrush rather than really painting. Just to get, like, a nice big blend going on. Uh, this isn't saying what are you using to draw, don't mind me asking. Not at all. Um, I am using graphics tablet. I'm using the uh, Cintiq 16, which is a screen tablet that came out a couple of years ago. I've had it now for about two years. Um, I would recommend if you're interested in kind of giving this a go, uh, I would start with one of the, um, either one of the Intuos Wacom tablets or like with Huon, uh, Huon. there's a few other brands that are cheaper. Um, I've never really used a brand other than Wicom, um, it's what my, my uni had, so it's kind of what I got into using. Um, and I've never, they've never served me wrong. Um, but they are more expensive, so um, a lot of the other tablets, Xpen and Huan, are perfectly fine. I just don't have experience with them, so I can't really give much info on them, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm using a uh, Cintiq 16 tablet and Adobe Photoshop CC, which is kind of like the current version of Photoshop. And as you can see, this brush here that I use for the hair is also very, very good at fur. In fact, I believe this pack was originally meant for rendering fur rather than hair. Um, and it's very good at what it does. I think it's a nice, soft, kind of pillowy, cloud-like fur, because this is quite like a, a woolly, a woolly fur texture on her coat, it, rather than, um, rather than being, like, really hairy. So, I want it to be very soft and, like, uh, kind of like cotton candy. Cotton candy. see the shape starting to build up. Ah, oh, Rebel, thank you so much for joining. Have a lovely afternoon and I will most likely see you next week on Wednesday for the next art stream. Although if I do plan to stream earlier than that, if I if I plan to do any, uh, there you go, can I see how that's looking? If I plan to do any streaming this weekend, I will of course let everyone know. And then we're kind of just going to keep doing this, keep rendering these nice fluffy shapes for a little bit. It's a slow process, but it's worth it to get that nice fluffy texture. It's like pancakes. You've got to take time to cook your pancakes properly. All right, then we can go a smidge darker. Let's um, pick up that skin layer. This hasn't properly erased. There we go. Uh, from there, oh yeah, I want to be on. 
doing this thing. What, what? Obviously, this bit down here is gonna be covered over by the fingers, and the fingers, uh, because of where they are, kind of lightly pressing into the fur, so um, they're gonna cause a little bit of compression. Just want to do a little bit on top as well, get that nice tubey, tubey feel. Uh, and then we can also kind of take away a bit here and there before I go on to the part that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> and the part I'm looking forward to is of course doing uh, highlights, but I think, again, making this up as I go along, I am going to erase line art where I no longer need it. Because in this case, it's just kind of hindering the shape of the hood. It's not really helping. Obviously, I'm leaving where the snowdrops are, but just some of the areas of the hood that we no longer need, I am going to remove. And then, uh, basically, that means we can go back to the hood fluff layer, working from that base tone. I'm going to take highlight, <coughs> and we're going to use that to add highlight to uh, the fluff, like so. <laughs> Secondary school really does that. Um, it, it is very, very good at killing enthusiasm for the arts. Uh, it almost did for me as well. Should I do some of this on overlines? Um, I only stuck at it because I was lucky enough to have a supportive family, but uh, some of my, quite a few of my family members were quite arty. Uh, ironically, not my parents, my parents are, <laughs> My uh, my parents are not arty in the slightest, but um, I, I was very lucky to have their support. My school didn't really support me very much in uh, art at all, so that was very much self-motivated there. Um, uh, but I kind of, I went to uni and the thing about unis and art schools, they don't teach you how to draw. Um, the most useful thing vis-a-vis -vis actually learning how to paint from uni was the fact that they arranged life drawing classes. Life drawing is very useful, but these days with the internet you can kind of just get good references online and do studies that way. So I do not believe myself that um, art school is at all necessary for a career in the arts. Uh, I'm actually going to stick overlines on top of the sketch um, because, because I can and I'm crazy. We're not going to get quite so many hi um, highlights on this side anyway, because um, this side is slightly darker. Just going to add a little subtle bit of light underneath on the bottom side. Uh, teachers, yeah, teachers uh, do not help either. Um, I kind of clashed with my art teachers, one of them, quite a lot, because they didn't like uh, anime, they didn't like manga art style, and they're like, oh, you can't get a career drawing like this. Let's kind of put some fluffy edges in. Um, but I didn't care. <laughs> so I carried on drawing what I wanted to do, and uh, it kind of infuriated her because technically I was pretty good for my age at that point. So she couldn't not give me decent grades, even though she didn't like what I was painting. Um, which now I look back and find quite funny. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Firefly Bellum, DJ Toupe, and Mr. Rantastic for following. And then again, get this looking really soft and cozy looking. <laughs> I was a bit of a, a rebellious kid, um, it's true, at school anyway. I 
then that fluff the edges I will probably want to do that on the bottom as well actually um, but for now we'll just get this top edge nice and furry again this brush absolutely amazing cannot recommend enough I won't bother with the bit behind sprinkle because it's behind sprinkle <laughs> there are quite a lot UK critters I mostly um, hear about them or see them at conventions and stuff but I think there are quite a lot Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Whoops. I'm gonna have to paint those snowdrops on a uh, separate layer, I think. Nice, this texture's coming out nicely now. And then just a little bit around here. Again, get that nice fluff going on. Fluff, 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 fluff. Again, on this side, it's mostly obscured by the snowdrops, so I'm not gonna get too precious. Uh, and if we turn off the, uh, that's the overlay, so turn off, turn off this, we can kind of see the shapes we're getting here. We're getting the nice, light, um, fluffy, most of the lighting is gonna be on this, as you can see, coming in from the uh, top left-hand side. Um, and uh, that's why we haven't done quite so much highlighting on the other side. So yeah, you can kind of see what we're going for here. Um, and yeah, I think, I think what time is it? I think that's kind of where we might leave it today. We, we got locked on, we've done most of the fluffy hood, uh, we've done the horns and we've done the hair, which is all great progress. Um, if you missed the, oh, how did I start getting doing D&D art? Let's answer a question first. Um, I got started doing D&D art I think the way a lot of D&D artists get started, um, I drew characters from my home game. Um, the very first D&D game I ever played in was at university. Um, a friend of mine invited me to play and I just thought I'd give it a go and I absolutely loved it. Um, so I started drawing all the characters from our game. It was a homebrew game and a homebrew system so I was playing a selkie hunter which is kind of like a ranger. Uh, my now partner was playing a uh, kind of like an arcane trickster type character, a um, kitsune. Uh, and then we had we had all sorts. We had a changeling. We had um, had another selkie. It was crazy uh, madness, but it was really good fun. And I drew all of our characters and kind of just fell into it from there. And then I started getting commissions for D and D characters. And now I've worked on a couple of tabletop RPG like game. Uh, kind of projects now and more hopefully more on the way so um more D, &D. that's basically i'm now D, &D is, is basically my life now which if you told me that uh five years ago i would have laughed um but hey life takes strange turns and i'm very grateful it did why is my hair doing this why anyway uh i think that's kind of where we're gonna leave the painting side of things for today i'm gonna drop some links in chat firstly twitter uh, if you would like updates about when I'm streaming, about new projects, um, and when commissions are open, possibly most importantly for anyone interested, uh, Twitter is the place to check out. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's where I, I, I post the most frequently, it's like my main social media. However, I also have Instagram, if Instagram is more your kind of thing. Um, what can I say? It's Instagram, it'll have art on it, some costume making and miniature painting. <laughs> uh, next up, I now have a YouTube channel, so if you missed uh, an earlier part of this uh, stream, the VOD will be up in a couple of hours, so keep an eye uh, on that, and I'll probably post to Twitter when, when that's up as well. Um, next, um, what is comes after that? Oh, music! If you've enjoyed the music I've used in this stream, it's all by an artist named Kai Engel. It's great, royalty-free, ambient stuff, I really recommend. You can find it on the free music archive and on Spotify, so um, yeah, it's just good, nice ambient D&D stuff, so I'm quite fond of it. Uh, do I have a rough schedule, um, or is it when just I prefer it? Uh, I tend to stream on Wednesdays and Fridays at 5pm at GMT. Um, sometimes that changes, I am in the process of moving house, so that can throw things a little bit off kilter. Um, occasionally I also stream on Thursdays, um, I, I like kind of, I've started doing some Stardew Valley streams, so if you want to join me for that, again, I'll be posting about it on Twitter. Uh, next up, if you would purely like to see my, um, portfolio, that's the word, please check out my art station, that's where a lot of my best stuff is, 
And finally, uh, if you want to support the work I do, I have a Patreon where you can get a few different uh, kind of bonuses, such as you'll see art before people on Twitter do half the time. Uh, there's commission priority, there are sketches and works in progress, and occasionally step-by-step -step tutorials. So um, check that out if you're interested. Now, who is online? Ah, I know who's online. Let's let's go raid Markeen, shall we? I like raiding Mark. It's it's funny. <laughs> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. It's always just nice and chill painting with with all of you. I have a really nice group of people I stream with, so thank you all so much. All right, uh, we are going to go and raid now. So. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I will be back on Wednesday at the very latest. So I hope to see you all then, and bye. <laughs>